Good morning, everybody. This is so serious. I had to read it here. I'll do another one for the other one. But dozens of suspicious white powder letters sent to state lawmakers. Okay. They're saying they're suspicious so they have no clue where they came from. All right. Is that how they operate? Second Kings chapter 23 starting at the third and the, the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant and the king commanded Hilkiah, Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem them also that burn incense unto Baal to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven and he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burnt it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people and he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba and brake down the high places of the gates that were in the, in the entering in of the gate of Joshua the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. They're having a celebration breaking bread. And as we read, it's they they used the powder as commemorance of the children that had passed. All right. Very interesting. Do you see what I'm saying? So they had suspicious powder sent to the White House. Wow. All right. Man. Deuteronomy chapter 28. 21st. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee unt until he hath consumed thee from off the, the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And they, heaven that is over thy head, shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Ugh. The Lord shall make the rain of thy hand powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And they carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beast of the earth. And no man shall fray them away. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord can bring affliction. Fear God. He's the real savage. He could bring affliction on you. Stop thinking that situations are always this and that. God allows it. Have you prayed? Are you asking God for leadership right there? And you don't move it. Doing stuff again. Matthew chapter 21. 
Starting after 41st. They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits and their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become of the land of the coroner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation bringing forward the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisee had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Right there. They wanted to do something to him. That's how people are. They're wicked at times. They're so jealous and so angry. They'll try and set you up, looking for ways to set you up instead of looking on how they can achieve better themselves. You know what I mean? That's, that's what happens here. And the Pharisees were mad because everyone was really into him. And they were jealous because they were getting money off of faking favors for these people. And Jesus came. Luke chapter 20. Starting to 15. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen. And shall give the vineyard to own others. And when they heard it, they said, God forbid. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour sought to lay hands on him, and they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them, and they watched him, and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold on his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest, and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of thy but teaches the way of God truly. They knew he was true. The fair right there shows you the Pharisees. The Pharisees represent the devil because they wanted to do something because he was telling the truth. They didn't like him because he was real and the other people knew he was real and told him he was real. They seen he was real and felt what he was saying. All right. Guys, I got a string of revelation. I'm going to just get started. Make sure I start at the first one. That's crazy. So it was another one. Here we go. Wait, even before that. Here we go. Revelation chapter 4, starting at 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in the heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, and sight like unto an emerald. And Round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of the fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around about the throne there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf and the third beast had a face as a man and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle 
God's squad. You don't get it? This is the squad that protects the most high God. Okay? So if you want beef with God, everybody's saying, I hate God, angry at God. People want to be Satanists. You do beef with that. That's who you beef with. His squad. Right there. Everybody acting like they tough. Saying hard things. You ain't harder than them. Trust me. You ain't harder than them. <laughs> By far. By scripture. They're monsters. In the right way. Revelation chapter 6. Starting at the first. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard. As it were the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying. Come and see. And I saw. And behold a white horse. And he sat. He that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And powder and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, I beheld into a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Right there, the judicial system. Guys, this isn't talking about blatant. It's about some type of threat of judicial system, and this person with on the horse comes and brings a change that is that of death. Remember, he's going to come back and kill death. Death is killable. In scripture, death will die. But God let is not, not come yet. So we're dealing with that. Holding the black horse, holding the balances. People are saying many different things, I'm telling you. It's about our law system. That That's the balance system. There may be a breakdown, maybe a change. Could be some type of interruption in the plans of God. Caused by the deceiver. Revelation chapter 7. Let's go, guys. Starting at the 10. And I cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, Neither shall the sun light on them for any heat. They're at perfect peace. Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Being with him is perfect peace. You do not want to leave this earth not accepting Jesus. You don't. If you do, then you're not in peace at all. People say, I want peace. This is the only way. If you don't accept Jesus Christ and do his will, you're gone. It's over. It's torment by scripture. Give me a second. Oh, I'm about to... All right. Revelation 14. Starting at 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, there is the patience of the saints. There are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, what they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, 
thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time is come for thee to reap for the harvest of earth is ripe and the and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven he also having a sharp sickle understand guys this is god sending his people you reap what you sow so this is them beginning judgment they're just yo just like court what happens the bailiff the people come and get you what's going on what the, what's not understood how is this fake they're beginning the process so jesus christ can judge you don't get that so these are things happening to begin the judgment process he's the judge he says i judge you don't you or i don't even judge he judges he's beginning the process this is my interpretation from reading personally he this is his beginning of it one's doing one part one's doing the other same thing in court you have a receptionist who accepts you in you talk to then you go into the bailiff who escorts you in to the king judge how is this mock it makes perfect sense what because they're carrying sickles and not guns you're not thinking Revelation chapter 15 Starting at the third And they sang the song of Moses The servant of God And the song of the Lamb Saying great and marvelous are thy works Lord God Almighty Just and true are thy ways Thou King of saints Who shall not fear thee O Lord and glorify thy name For thou only art holy The all, For all nations shall come and worship before thee For thy judgments are made manifest and after that I looked and behold the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in heaven was open and the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen and having their breasts girded with golden girdles and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled right there so each angel has a different duty of this of those plagues revelation chapter 19 start at day and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for fine linen is the righteous of the saints and he saith unto me right Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war right there he judges and makes war everybody else is causing these things to happen they're cleaning up the one opens up like a da da he can judge and make war all right his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god who's the living word of god jesus christ and the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses clothed in fine linen the army the army oh what did i say i said jesus is a warrior He's not lovey-dovey. How many times have I said that now? Do you get it? He's a warrior. You're mocking a warrior who has come to save your life. To save you from humanity that is against you. You're at war and not even knowing it. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, on that. So true, man. Now we're at Revelation 19. 
fifth and up. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard it as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of many mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the word, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at the feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. Yo, you want to know why it's funny? Everybody hating Jesus, saying I serve God. You worship Jesus to make it to God. If you don't know Jesus, God won't know you. Right there. Confirming everything I said. To all these dudes, all y'all talking, every one of y'all, from front to back, top to bottom, state to state, all of y'all talking. I said that, and now I just read it. So do you believe in the Bible or not? Right there. I read the Bible. Anybody who says they believe the Bible and don't believe Jesus is the Messiah, you're a lie. By scripture, just say this, I hate the Bible. So we now we can know your blasphemy. Because this going against this book is blasphemy. Right there. Now we're at chapter 19. Starting at 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse. And he he that sat upon him was called. Oh, we got there. So you're doing true. Go off a sharp sentence. Wool with okay. And out of his mouth go off a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he that it on his vesture and on his thigh was the name written King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Right there. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Period. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Yo. All the believers want to be there. You all want to be there. You don't want to be anywhere else. It's the safest place on earth. You'll get the warmest feeling you'll ever gotten in your life. It will life will make sense. Everything. You want to be there. I'm telling you. And it's real. It's nothing you gotta search out, go looking for it. No. Your belief and faith is gonna take you there. Regardless. Your belief in him will take you to him. He is omnipresent. Revelation chapter 20. Starting at the eighth, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for ba to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about, in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And <laughs> God is the real. Savage God <clears throat> And they went up on the breadth of the earth I'll read it again Encompassed the camp of the saints About in the beloved city And fire came down from God out of heaven And devoured them And the devil that deceived them Was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone 
where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for him. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death that remember we read you and I will see if we don't trust in Jesus Christ. Remember, I read it. He said, if dying is to Moses, what is denying the son of man, son of God? What is that to me? It is facing the second death. That's all it said at Hebrews chapter 10. That's all it said. Look how it connected in Revelations. It's not a game. You'll be sent to a second death if you don't trust in Jesus Christ. Right here. Jesus, you must find yourself in him. You must. You must find a way. Or right here by revelation, you go into the lake of fire with the devil. Right here, I read it. Everybody who's part of that spirit goes into the lake of fire. You got to separate yourself and find Christ. You must. You got to separate yourself from thinking in this world. In terms of Jesus, you must think. By scripture. This is a White House reading. How did I make this up? Let me see how much time. This is a fact. One more I'll give you. <sighs> King of Solomon, chapter 5. Starting at 7. The watchmen that went about the city found me. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick of love, that is that thy beloved more than another beloved, O thou fairest among women, that is thy beloved more than another beloved, that thou doest so charge us. My beloved is white and ruddy, and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. His head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters washed with milk and filthy and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies dropping sweet smelling myrrh. So we're examining them checking out. Now understand, it's poetry. It's like poetry. When you truly find Jesus Christ, you're going to realize he's true. You're going to understand how real he is. You're going to get it. This is King Solomon. He realized the richest, smartest, most wealthy man that ever lived on earth. Owned an entire continent. Who said, I read it to you. He could live another thousand years and not having Jesus Christ. Would be the it would be the, the nightmare of his life. He needed Christ. Even the richest man in the world ever to live, richer than any rich man alive right now, accepted Christ. So why can't they? It's no excuse that they can't. That's why God does things. So these rich people, if they don't accept Christ, there's no excuse for them. They go to hell. Doesn't matter. Because King Solomon accepted him. This man was richer and owned more than anyone. Check history. It's facts. King Solomon. Look him up. Owned everything. More than anyone ever. And he accepted Christ. And wrote that if I had not, I don't know what I would do. Right here. So there's no excuse for you not accepting Jesus. There's none. You go to torment. No matter how rich, no matter how poor, you got to find Christ. You must. That's the best ending to you understanding what's going on. This was the powder to the White House. How is this mob?
Guys, keep everything in prayer. That's all I can say. Keep everything in prayer. I'll give you this next chapter. Acts chapter 1. Starting at the 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father had put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall so come in the like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem, from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and James and son of Aphila and Simon, Simon and Zealot and Ju and Judas the brother of James. Yeah, yo, right there, all of his disciples there. When he brought, this is what I'm saying. He brought up Enoch the same way. You guys say it, and he called them different names. And right there were all the disciples. So this, the book of Enoch, don't need to be here. That's all that matters. Is Enoch made it into heaven like you need to anybody focusing on the Enoch thing they're alive from hell focus on this right there in scripture he had me do that how can I make that up that's God focus on this yeah Enoch made it to heaven yeah he brought him up stop looking for the book of Enoch focus on the Bible Jesus Christ Anybody doing otherwise is wicked. Do not follow them. They're leading you to hell. Psalms chapter 68, starting at the 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. King of... Look, yo. Yo. Remember he's saying King James evil. Conscious. Conscious. What's up? What's up? The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. So you're going against the Lord. If you had a problem, you're going against the Lord. Kings of armies did flee us flee apace, and she that tarried at home did eat the spoil. Though ye have leaned among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove. Covered with silvers, and her her feathers with yellow gold, when the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Salmon. The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan, and the high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. The Lord is with them. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Salmon. God's going to make the land white as snow again. That's what he wants. He wants followers, believers. Guys, believe. All you got to do is believe. There's nothing that costs you to believe. He'll make a way in all situations. Trust him. You're angry. Believe. you mad. Believe. You need money. Believe. You're in, you're in trouble. You're in, you're in tremendous detriment. Believe. Believe. He'll show up. Then thank him. He'll show up. Thank him. He'll thank him. Because he made it work for you. Believe in him. He can make a way out of no way. He'll make a way when there's no way. Trust in him. You got to trust in him in life. 
Don't cry over bad things. Don't spill milk. Trust in him. Believe. Believe, guys. That's what you must do. Trust in God. You got to trust in God Almighty. That's the only way to make it. Let me see. All right. You know, this is very serious, yo. The white powder showing up at the White House. It's very serious. Guys, it's very serious. This isn't a joke. This isn't a joke. That's why I had to put this over here. I had to, y'all. You know, this is the White House. You know, this is Joe Biden and them. They're saying they're receiving something. They're saying they're receiving something. This white powder, a, a suspicious white powder. And it lines up with the Bible when it talks about powder. How it was sprayed for children that passed away. That's crazy. What are the rumors that are going around? Yo, what in the world? Yo, this story was just come out. Read it down below. All rights reserved. Right on time. This is a dual action one. Wow.